this uh, particular presentation is my opportunity to share some of the proposals that are being brought forward, the budget that has been worked through with the SUMA and SARM executive and government relations, and that we plan to move forward on over the next four years. I also want to take this opportunity to provide some of the rationale behind the changes that you're going to see in our budget and in our funding formula going forward. Just to get started, the reason SAMA exists is to provide a financial foundation and a revenue source for municipalities and to a smaller extent to the education sector. So municipalities get and have the money they need to pay for their essential services. Those services include everything from road construction to sewer and water related work. The education sector does continue to get 35% of its operating funding for K-12 education from the property tax system. It includes snow removal, fire and police protection, parks and recreation and library services. In essence, all of the local services required to maintain and sustain communities get a component of their funding from the revenue base that SAMA provides. In fact, that revenue base amounts to more than 50% of the local revenue municipalities have available to them for the majority, the vast majority, of municipalities in Saskatchewan. It added up to a total of $1.55 billion in revenue to fund local services in the education system in 2012. Now, one of the beauties about this particular system is that it gives local municipalities the full authority and control of determining how much revenue they want to draw from their assessment base. And then they have full authority to determine where they want to dedicate those resources that they get from the property assessment and tax base. So they can choose the priority in an unfettered way. And then they're held accountable on a local level for the decisions that they make through the local election process. Well, it's that kind of responsibility and authority and local accountability that allows municipalities to maintain their local autonomy. And that's a big part, I think, in the strength of Saskatchewan with our over 770 separate municipalities, all able to operate independently with the creativity of the councils being able to be brought to bear in an unfettered way. And Sam is very proud to be able to provide the support and the financial foundation that assists local councils in meeting their objectives. As an organization, we have two broad sets of responsibility. And for the purpose of this discussion, I want to look at this from the budget perspective. We're governed by a seven-person board of directors, and that board is given authority to determine the rules and procedures and policies that have to be followed by all jurisdictions across the province when they're determining assessed values. We're also responsible to follow up and check that the assessments that are placed on the assessment roll are actually done in compliance with legislation and then confirm the roles once we're satisfied that they are. We're responsible for maintaining a comprehensive database of assessment information and making that information available on request to stakeholders and government. And we are also responsible and considered a safety net for the province. These components of the agency's responsibilities are considered our governance functions. These components of our responsibilities have traditionally been funded by the province. Going forward, <laughs> SAMA will continue to seek 100% of the cost for these services from the province. The other part of our services where the bulk of our staff are focused is the actual provision and delivery of assessment values to our client municipalities. We work in a competitive environment in this area. Any municipality has the ability to choose an alternative assessment service provider if they're not satisfied with the service SAM is providing them provided that they get a licensed and accredited individual to do the necessary work. That's been the case for close to 20 years now, since 1994. And I'm pleased to say that in all that time, 756 of the 774 total municipalities in Saskatchewan have continued to choose SAMA as their assessment service provider of choice. And that's a real testament to the excellent work done by the staff who work for the organization and provide service to all of our client municipalities. This component of our budget is funded from two components. We get part of the funding from municipal requisitions. 
And we also get part of the funding for assessment services from the education sector. Until about three years ago, that was provided separately from the education sector. When the province took over funding for determining mill rates, they took over responsibility for that component of SAMA's funding as well, on behalf of the education sector. Now Saskatchewan's in an enviable position. Over the last number of years, we've experienced record levels of growth across the province. And in fact, over the last three years, between 2010 and 2012, we had between 750 million in new taxable assessment one year, 1.1 billion the next year, and over 800 million the next year. The average, actually, over the last few years has been 877 million in new taxable assessments that have been captured and by our staff going out, capturing the growth that is occurring in client municipalities through the annual maintenance process by following up on requests by individual municipalities to check for changes in certain properties and through the inspection work that we have been able to do over the last number of years. That translates at last year's mill rates into over $21 million in new annual revenue per year that the organization is able to bring in for municipalities. 60% of that goes to municipalities, 40% to the education sector. To put it in perspective, our entire budget is $16 million. So every year, the work that our staff do for municipalities and the education sector provides enough new revenue to fully fund SAMA's budget, plus put another $5 million in the bank for municipalities and the education sector. And then the next year, we go and we do that again. Now, over the last four years, since the last uh, four-year budget plan was presented, SAMA has looked hard at every aspect of the work that we do. We've reviewed every one of our business processes. As an agency, we adopted the lean philosophy a year ahead of government back in 2008. And for those in municipalities who are unaware of the lean philosophy, it is essentially a set of tools and ways of thinking that allow the people closest to the work in a particular work process to get together and follow within a structured environment a particular set of processes that will allow them to examine every step in the work process from the start of the work to the delivery of the final product to clients. They look at that and they determine if there's any steps in the process that aren't adding the value they should be. And then they identify ways we can either mitigate or remove those unnecessary bureaucratic steps in the process to make our processes as efficient as possible while continuing to provide value to our clients. Over the last four years, our staff have looked at all of our various business process improvements and made substantial gains across the board through their work that they have done in these areas. One of the most significant gains we've made in the last four to five years is in the area of timely delivery of maintenance. Four or five years ago, our clients were telling us in no uncertain terms that uh, Sam, but you're just getting started your annual maintenance in January of the year that it's due, and then you're taking the next five to six months to get it all done. Well, in many cases, you wanted that maintenance completed at the beginning of the year, not just started at the beginning of the year. So what we've done over the last uh, four to five years is worked hard to try to advance the timeliness of maintenance to the point where last year we essentially had two-thirds of the maintenance done and ready for delivery by the beginning of January. We will continue to work to make improvements in this area going forward, but it's been great progress that, that our staff have been able to accomplish over the last number of years in this area. At the same time, SAMA, who gets a significant component of funding from government, fell into the, under the government's umbrella, and the um, government four years ago said they wanted to reduce the size of the public sector, reduce the footprint, by 15%. Over the last four years, SAMA has adjusted our workforce by 20%, exceeding that target by 5%. In fact, to put it into perspective, if you look at our budget today as an organization in 2013, our total budget, all, everything included, is $800,000 less than what our total budget was in 2009. Through that process, we're very proud of the fact that our staff have stayed with us and we've been able to continue to develop and, create and retain a dedicated group of professionals that have expertise in the valuation of every type of property in Saskatchewan. We have people with expertise in the valuation of any type of industrial property from potash mines, 
to oil and gas wells, to railways and pipelines, any type of agricultural land you can find, any kind of residential or commercial property, and any approach to value that is utilized within the market value system. We have individuals with expertise that are credentialed professionals able to provide service to every one of our clients in those areas. And we bring that level of comprehensive service to bear for every one of our client municipalities. It's available. We are the only organization with that depth and breadth of service in the province. Through the last number of years, and frankly this has taken longer than this to develop, but it's continued to get worse over the last number of years, the one area that SAMA has been unable to address through the best efforts of our staff over the last number of years is in the area of keeping up with the ongoing development and growth in the province in the form of doing general reinspections of all the property across entire jurisdictions. We've been able to respond to requests we've received from municipalities to do specific changes that municipal administrators have identified and keep up with that assessment maintenance. We've done some targeted reinspections, but on a broad basis, we continue to slip and fall behind in the area of keeping the entire inventory of physical data up to date for municipalities. And what that means is, if you have a property in a municipality that's been identified in the last few years for maintenance, the assessment for that property is likely up to date. The physical data that is tied to that particular assessment parcel is likely up to date. What you may not know is that there may be two or three other properties right around it that haven't been identified for any change. And because we haven't been able to do any reinspections in the last 10 to 15 to 20 years, the actual data on those properties may be 10, 15, or even 20 years or more out of date. Now, that results in a system where it, clearly there is some unfairness that can build up over time and inequities. But for the purposes of the budget presentation, there is also a significant budget issue that comes forward. There's a lot of dollars that ends up being left on the table as a result of our inability to go out and do inspections in municipalities. And I'll illustrate that with one example that just came up here over the last, uh, last eight months. This particular example is a rural example in this case. And uh, what you see here is a picture of some tanks and some improvements in a, in a rural area. What we had was a rural administrator actually retired from one uh, RM, and she took on a job working uh, temporarily for a different rural municipality. On her way into work to the new job, she passed this particular property every day on her way through the RM into the RM office. Now, this is a pretty diligent ad municipal administrator, and her regular practice when she saw things like this was to double check it against the assessment rule, just to make sure that, uh, that th there was actually an assessment on, uh, on the property. Well, in this case, these improvements had been built and put in place years before, but for whatever reason, they got missed in that year's annual maintenance and never picked up since. So she called us, we went out and did the inspection, and through the assessment that was added from this one property that was missed alone, it added $14,000 in revenue for the municipality. 4,000 of that went to the education sector, 10,000 was kept by the municipality. Now their entire municipal requisition for SAMA for a full year of service is less than $9,000. So with one property that was missed, it was enough to pay their entire requisition for the year and put another $1,000 in the bank for the municipality. And if you think this is a one-off, there's only one property missed in the province, and then we've got them all, unfortunately, you'd be sadly mistaken. Through the reinspection work we've done over the last four to five years, we've seen that when we're uh, reinspecting residential, commercial, and industrial property and the like, we're finding, on average, between two and five percent growth in the assessment base following the completion of those reinspection projects. Now, that's not consistent. If you have a municipality that has kept up with their permitting system and stays right on top of any changes in their communities some of the, and has had a reinspection in the last few years, those percentages can be lower. But on average, we're finding 2% or more across municipalities when we're doing reinspections of the residential, commercial, and industrial property in those jurisdictions. Well, when you stretch that across our entire inventory of properties, it starts to uh, add up to a lot of dollars. To take this particular table from the bottom up, 
and put things in perspective. On average, the last time we did a general reinspection of all properties in cities and towns was over 15 years ago. So half the cities and towns haven't had a reinspection for more than 15 years. As you can see from the 1997-1995 numbers, that's the, that's the median line where half the municipalities haven't been reinspected for longer than that. For villages and resort villages, the number is over 20 years, on average, since the last time we did a general f physical reinspection in those communities. For RMs it's getting, and the North, it's getting close to 25 years since the last time we did a general reinspection in those communities. What we've extrapolated out using the low end of the range of just 2% of the inventory being missed, and using the low end of the range, it adds up to over $30 million in annual revenue municipalities should have today to help you to provide extra services or to reduce your mill rates, but you don't because we haven't been able to keep up with the general inspections of the properties. So our board has looked at this, they've, they've identified this as a major area that we've got to find a solution for and start moving forward to solve. They've set a series of strategic directions to help us do that. First, we want to establish and implement a new stakeholder funding model for the organization that will allow us the resources to move forward to meet the balance of these strategic directions. The agency wants, or the board, wants us to look at simplifying our various valuation processes, and this is an area, and all of our work processes. This is an area where we want to continue to provide a high quality product to our clients going forward, and in fact, where we can improve that. But where we have unnecessary complexity in the process, we want to identify that and simplify that to make the job as efficient as possible for our staff to be able to deliver service to municipal clients. The big issue that I want to focus on in the next couple of slides is the next one. Our board wants SAMA to use a combination of ongoing business process improvements, simplification of our valuation models where it's practical to do it, and the implementation of some proven new technologies to make radical improvements in our staff's production capacities going forward. We also want to continue to focus on strengthening the capabilities of each of our additional employees because as an organization our strength is and continues to be our people. On the technology side, many folks in municipalities may not be aware of this, but when our staff go out to do inspections right now, they actually have to print out copies of whatever property information that they want to go out and check when they're out in the field. And take those printouts with them out to the field, that stack of paper, hopefully they've captured everything that they need to check so they don't have to go back to the office to print more, more paper to bring out. They take that stack of paper out with them out to the field and they handwrite the actual changes that they see on the properties while they're doing inspections. Then the next time they're in the office, they take their stack of papers and either they choose to type it into our system, which is not optimized for data entry right now, or they give it to data entry people to enter, and those data entry people have to interpret their handwriting, identify any missing elements, hand the information back to our staff, who give it back to the data entry piece people after filling it out, and it goes back and forth till it's completed. It ends up in a process where our staff have to spend two to three days in the office for every one day they spend out in the field. Well, we know that there's technology out there, it's available now and in use in other assessment jurisdictions in North America now that would allow our assessment appraisers to essentially take the necessary assessment data they need to do their work with them out in the field on a tablet or a handheld device. They can also integrate that with GIS so they can find through the maps and that where they need to be working, which properties they have to work on. And we also want to make sure they have air, digital imagery, aerial imagery on the applications. So if imagery is necessary to complete the work, they've got it at their fingertips and they can essentially complete the job as much as possible while they're out in the field. Through that process, we want to change from our current environment where our staff spend two or three days in the office for every one day in the field to an environment where our staff can spend one day in the field for every one day in the office. Our objective is to allow our staff to be able to double their production capacity through the business process improvements and the new technology and the changing ways of, of handling 
our assessments going forward. There's a cost to that. The cost is just under $5 million. And it's a pretty significant project because we have to essentially rebuild our computer system, in, in implement a new enterprise GIS system and integrate imagery with all of that and create some new web portal services. We anticipate the project will take just over three years from, from when we get started to when it's completed. And we're seeking funding for it over a four-year period. Adds up to just over $1.2 million. We're going to ask for that capital funding to be cost-shared 50-50 between mun the municipal sector and government. So it adds up to $612,000 per year for capital funding support from municipalities over the next four years, and the same amount from government. The total amount of the municipal requisition right now is $5.8 million. So that means a 10.6% technology premium being added to the requisition effective 2014 for the next four-year period while we develop and build the new technology. When the technology is in place, along with the business process improvements that we're seeking to make and the simplification of our models, we want to be able to, through the rededication of our internal resources, be able to change from our current reinspection cycle, where it takes us 40 to 50 years to reinspect our entire inventory of 800,000 properties, to an environment where we can inspect the entire inventory over a 12-year period and capture that $30 million that's left on the table over that 12-year period for our client municipalities and, and the education sector. Now, if you look at our current funding model, this was enshrined in legislation in the mid-2000s, and it was based at that time on the various benefits received from all parties. Our funding model at that time called for three funding parties to provide revenue to the organization, the education sector, the municipal sector, and government. Over time, that model has evolved to where it is today, where the government has taken over the education sector component, and they're asked to pay up to 65% of our funding for the organization. The municipal sector is asked to pay 35% of the funding for SAMA. When this new funding model came in place, at the time, the municipal sector was paying more than their 35% proportion. And the legislation called for municipalities, the total requisition to remain capped at $5.8 million until the other funding stakeholders from education and government got up to their proportionate level of funding. That was quite a few years ago. Fast forward nine years. Today, we have an environment where the government, on behalf of education and the government, pays $10.1 million to SAMA. And the municipal sector pays $5.8 million, which is an amount that's been capped at the same level since 2004. Many municipalities may say, well, wait a second. My requisition, our requisition, has actually changed. It's gone up in the last few years. If you're in a municipality that's experienced a lot of growth, that will be your experience. Because our requisition is based on a, on a dollar per parcel basis. So as you're getting new parcels, new improvements and the like on your parcels, your requisitions will increase. What you don't know, likely, is that SAMA hasn't been able to keep that additional requisition revenue that comes from the increased growth and in inventory that we have to continue to support. We've actually had to take that additional revenue because of this cap and give it in the form of requisition reductions to municipalities that are not growing at the same level as our fastest growing municipalities in the province. In addition to that, the benefits received from the property assessment system and property tax system have changed substantially from when the funding formula was originally developed. Between 2000 and 2008, we had a pretty consistent pattern of ev from every property tax dollar, over 60 cents of every property tax dollar went to the education sector on a province-wide average basis. And under 40 percent, 38 percent, went to the municipal sector, again, on a province-wide average basis. In 2008, 9, and 10, the government weighed in very heavily to start to defray some of the costs of education and take them off the property tax base. They put in over a quarter of a billion dollars of revenue from other sources and reduced the education property tax by an equivalent amount. At the same time, over the last five to six years, municipalities have been experiencing record levels of growth and record levels of demand for increased service to build out new subdivisions and improve infrastructure and the like, which has in turn required them to get more and more revenue from the property tax base to pay for the, those increased demands. 
to the point where in 2012, the tables had essentially been reversed. As of 2012, 38 cents of every property tax dollar on a provincial average basis goes to the education sector, 62 cents of every dollar goes to the municipal sector. Our funding formula was established under the old rules with the old level of benefits received. What we want to do over the next four years is realign our model to reflect current patterns and benefits received. So the updating funding model that we're proposing and moving forward on for implementation in 2014 is going to continue to ask government to pay 100% of the cost for governance services, which we estimate to be $6 million at the 2014 level. We're also going to ask government to pay 38% of the remaining funding of the organization required for the operational needs of the agency which represents the education sector's benefits received. Not noted here, but worth noting, we are asking government as well to pay 50% of the new technology capital funding. We'll be asking municipalities to pay 62% of any remaining amount of our operational funding, which represents the level of benefits received by the municipal sector for those services in 2012. We're not at that level today. It will result in a two-year transition period. And over that two-year period, we'll be seeking our operational funding increases from municipalities. It will result in an 8.1% adjustment in the requisition, up from 5.8 million total, in 2014. And a further 3% adjustment on an overall basis in 2015. But in addition to that, in 2015, we'll be introducing a $20 per property maintenance fee for any maintenance that's requested or approved by the municipality to be done. There will be a $20 per parcel maintenance fee that will be charged as a one-time basis for that maintenance work. Now, when we first came forward with our proposal, we actually had higher flat rate percentages in the first year of this proposal to capture the transition all at once. And our stakeholders at the time said, you've got to spread this out over at least a couple of years. And further to that, we would like you to consider and implement some sort of a fee for service so that the places where the most growth is occurring are paying a bit more for the overall services to reflect the fact that that's where most of the growth is occurring. So the proposal you see today is a reflection of that feedback, and it incorporates a cost for maintenance. Now, Keep in mind this $20 per parcel maintenance cost is actually just a fraction of our average cost that we pay for maintenance, but it does represent a, a, a fee that will be related to the level of service provided for maintenance. It will start in 2015, in the second year. When it's all said and done, when you consider all the governance fu funding and the operational funding, what we're talking about is a change to the overall level of funding for SAMA from 63% from, from government, 37% from municipalities, to a 60-40 over the next two years. After that, any funding increases will be cost-shared in an equal percentage basis. This is an actual listing of the budget for SAMA for the next four years. The highlighted green area is capital funding for the new technology. It's a four-year program. 612000 a year from municipalities, same amount from government for four years. The technology program will be done by the end of, in 2017, and the funding for it will be done in 2017. On the municipal operating side, keep in mind our overall budget is increasing by 3.9% next year, and then 3% for the next three years, enough to essentially stabilize the organization. But because we are in the transition year, that translates into an 8.1% increase for municipalities next year. And a similar level in 2015, albeit split between the new fee for service and the 3% overall adjustment. After that, in 2016 and 2017, you'll see a 3% increase in each of those years. Now to put this in perspective, the municipal requisition has remained capped, as I mentioned, since 2004. We've been adjusting requisitions uh, between high growth and lower growth municipalities since then. 
to the point where today there's 526 municipalities, that includes 345 urban municipalities, that are actually paying less to salmon requisition today than they were in 2007. The next two years will be a phase-in period for the new requisition and the new funding formula. After next year, even after including the new capital funding and the new operational funding, there will still be 188 municipalities that are paying less for in requisition to SAMA in 2014 than they were seven years before in 2007. This particular chart gives you an idea of the impact on selected municipalities. This first chart, and for the benefit of the audience, you've got a bunch of charts in front of you that represent a variety of presentations. This is the first one in that presentation. This represents, actually as it turns out, the SUMA board members on the, uh, that, that we presented to first and their, their municipalities. To give you a couple of examples of specific municipalities in this case, let's look at Humboldt where they have had a lot of growth and their requisition in 2013 is $47,000. Back in 2007, it's 43,500. So it has gone up a bit in the last six years. Next year, the requisition will be going up to 55,793. So that's a municipality that has experienced growth, and that's what the impact could be on that municipality. If you look at the other end of the scale, let's look at Torquay in the middle of the chart. Torquay is a municipality that was paying us $3,300, just under that, for requisition in 2007. They pay just under $2,700 to us now. So essentially a $600 a year reduction. After these changes, the requisition will go up to $3,191, which will still be less than where they were seven years before. So that gives you an example of, of kind of the range of, of impacts of the proposed change. Now in closing, I want to mention that there is a very strong business case for this and a very high return on investment to our stakeholders for continuing to support the work that we do. When I speak about our operational work to keep up with maintenance and targeted inspections and the like, we estimate that at current levels of growth, next year through our maintenance work, we will likely bring in in the neighborhood of 22 to 23 million dollars in new tax revenue through the assessment growth that we capture. The year after that, in 2015, we'll have that 22 or 23 million and we'll find another $23 million in growth the next year, or in that range. So for a total of $46 million of new tax revenue from the growth over that two-year period, plus the 20-some million from the first year. Third year, it compounds again. You're getting close to $70 million in revenue in year three in total from the growth. <coughs> and by the fourth year, it's over $90 million in revenue compared to where you are today at it using existing mill rates. You compound that over the four-year period, it adds up to $244 million in new revenue from the growth that SAMA will capture for in municipalities over the next four years. Our entire operational budget is one-fifth of that. So we're talking about a $5 to one, a better than $5 to one payback for supporting SAMA operationally over the next four years. On the capital funding side, we're talking about new technology, which will take four years to complete. And that new technology will allow us to reinspect our inventory over the next 12 years after it's in place in 2017. So from that period, we will go from not capturing any of that $30 million to capturing up to $30 million a year in annual revenue. You'll add, you add that benefit over the incremental 12-year period. It adds up to $183 million in additional revenue that will be captured through the reinspection program that the new technology and associated changes will allow us to complete. That's an over $11 to one payback relative to the total cost for the new technology and the anticipated $600,000 a year support cost for the technology to keep it up to date for the next 12 year period. So there's a very strong business case to be made and we hope that uh, as, as an organization that our client municipalities will, will continue to support us. And certainly I'd be happy to answer any questions about this. Thank you.